the void, a realm beyond heaven, hell, and earth. Many expected it to be a realm of endless darkness and ceaseless suffering, but that is reserved for hell. This is a place of nothing but silence and ashes. There is no suffering, yet there is no joy. It is rumored that this is the scarred remains of the universe that came before ours. When the universe before ours no longer fit God's perfect little plan, it was destroyed and discarded, left to the ashes of time, thrown to the edges of the universe where nothing can see it. For it to make way for the new universe that we live in now. The only things that live here are all the things that were forgotten by God, time, and man. Discarded and thrown away, forgotten. Once beautiful and perfect, now twisted and deformed, hollowed shapes of what they once were. This realm is known as the place of no beginning and no end. Nothing shall be born here, and nothing shall die here. A man could wander into this realm, die a million times, and rise over and over again, never to know the peace of oblivion. A pregnant woman could enter this realm, give birth to their child, and the child would die and turn to ashes. For nothing shall begin here, and nothing shall ever end. All living things that exist here, including all of the plant life, they were not born here, not created here. They were brought here from the outside worlds, heaven, hell, and even earth. They come here either on purpose or by accident of curiosity. Some would walk off the edges of the rings of hell and find themselves here. Others would find themselves tempted to come here by a certain someone. And some would come to seek this place on purpose, trying to unravel the mysteries of the universe. But. All of those who come to this place, they never, ever leave this place unscarred. Even if they come out seeming as if nothing happened to them, in some way, shape, or form, this realm twists people from the inside out. There is but one ruler here, though the term ruler is very loose more like caretaker, a creature that was once mortal, plucked by the hand of Lucifer, was meant to become something great, the epitome and center of the whole universe, heaven, hell, and earth, to bring unity, but instead was twisted into something oh so foul, a ceaseless hunger that cannot be satiated. And now it lives here, in this place, seeking some kind of meaning or purpose to its existence. This creature, this thing, treats the entire universe like its playground, as if it was some form of prankster jester that runs around all the realms teasing and plucking at the minds of both angels, sinners, demons, and even mortals to find any source of entertainment or anything that can give it purpose or meaning in life. This creature, this shade of life, given many names and many forms, but that is not important now. This creature known as Selexi decided to pluck at the mind of one such a soul that decided to be bold enough to enter this realm. Uninvited and with intent of violence. 
seeking probably fame or glory or riches from their house, but instead was imprisoned, now to be the plaything of this twisted being. The sound of a heavy metal door can be heard from the distance of the hallways of these dungeons. The prisoner can hear the clicking of taloned heels walking down the hallways of the stone floors. The sound of jingling chains in the background can be heard as air passes through the hallways, moving them about swaying. The prisoner rolls around on the metal slab, almost like a surgery table, looking around at their surroundings with the very little light that is available to them. There were no windows looking outside at all, just vague pink and black candlelight, here and there providing a little bit of light. The ground is caked in ashes. It is as if a snowstorm came through this whole house, but instead of glistening icy snow, it is not but dry ashes, nothing but ashes. All the prisoner had left to them was just the pants they were wearing before they were stripped of all their other clothing and gear before being thrown into this place. After all the fighting, their skin was caked in dried blood, bruises and scars. Their chest felt the worst. It felt so... skinny. They could feel their own ribcage. Yet, it was so dark they couldn't see what exactly had happened. They were not this skinny before. But yet, their eyes were probably even worse. They could barely open their eyes to even try and get one little morsel of light. The prisoner remembers fighting the mere minions and thralls of this place, never truly encountering the master of this realm. So they wonder who is coming this time to their cell. Is it going to be some thrall jailer? Or would they perhaps get a surprise visit from the master of this place? They would find that the latter was correct. Dear oh me, look at you. So this is my little intruder. My my, you definitely got quite the thrashing now, didn't you? <laughs> The prisoner could not see who entered, though they could tell someone was in breathing distance of their little slab they lied upon. They moved their hands everywhere in attempt to try and feel their surroundings, wondering who was there to try and feel even the slightest bit of someone else's flesh. They could tell by that kind of pompous voice, it would have to be someone in charge. They of course protest and shout obscenities at their jailer for scarring them so. And then they retort. Yes, 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 go ahead and shout all your little insults and obscenities at me and gnash your little teeth away at me. <laughs> it doesn't change the fact that you are the intruder here, entering my home, trying to steal my treasures. Do you even know what you were trying to steal? Did you even have any kind of plan in mind? Do you even know where you are? I suppose you don't. I highly doubt you could comprehend such a place. The prisoner attempts to retort back to them by making a snide remark, mentioning that they could comprehend such a thing if they could even see anything right now. It was very bold and brave of them to insult back while being in such a position. Aha! Oh, this is true. One moment, please. 
Hold still, if you will. The prisoner can feel a finger, clawed and talon-like, poke at their forehead, and feel the tingling of strange magics pouring into their eyes, causing them to slowly open and heal, not fully, but just enough to be able to see. The prisoner was expecting some form of imposing tyrannical overlord clad in black armor, but instead, they were greeted by this strange Goetia, this avian of long flowing hair as if it was a pooling oasis, shining of various shades of pink and purple, a very smug look upon their face, and even cat-like pupils in their eyes, which was strange because most avians did not have pupils, but nonetheless, they were instead greeted by this handsome and magnificent creature, breaking all expectations. The prisoner was unable to look away, as if their eyes were pulled in by a gravitational pull of sheer beauty. Oh yes, yes, I know, I am rather handsome. Are you going to need a napkin for all that drool? <laughs> the prisoner originally was going to insult and gnash their teeth at their jailer, but instead, in this moment, they shake their head, trying to recompose themselves to be polite and not stare for too long, changing their demeanor entirely. They try to sloppily apologize as they refer to this creature as Sir, of which they then interrupt. I am not a sir. Selexi is the name. You may also refer to me as your royal hotness. <laughs> I'm far too pretty to be tied down by things such as gender. The prisoner stutters their lips and very quickly tries to sloppily use the correct pronoun as to not insult. Normally they would be oh so brave and boastful in a situation like this. But for some reason, the beauty of this creature is laying the prisoner low, making them tremble. <laughs> ah, they do always say that looks can kill, and it appears that my looks have killed your voice. What happened? Where was the boastful personality earlier? I was expecting a bombardment of insults. Go on, try to insult me, please do. I do so love a good word joust. <laughs> the prisoner attempts to try and make some form of wordplay back, but falls short and stutters their lips, looking so embarrassed, like a child in the middle of a play, forgetting all their lines. Ah, silent as the grave you are, it seems. It is as I expected. Now then, let's have a little chat about your little escapade in my house. Ah, you are silent as the grave, it seems. Well... Let me try and cook some words out of you. Let me ask you a simple question. Why are you here? What did you think you'd be getting out of your little escapade? Sneaking into my house like a thief? Trying to steal from me? What are you even looking for? Please don't tell me you are just a common burglar. Oh, that would be so boring. The prisoner feels quite bashful, for that is exactly why they were here. They are here to simply be a common burglar to steal whatever they could to try and enrich themselves. They were hoping to give this captor of theirs a much better answer. 
and yet they can tell from the tone of their captor's voice and the way they're speaking, they seem to be one that welcomes chaos into their house. They seem to be one that was hoping for an assassin to come and kill them for something exciting, and the prisoner feels like they have fallen short, and now instead of being all boastful, they instead look so shy and embarrassed. Oh, no, 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 sweetie, it can't be so. Oh, you were, weren't you? Oh, what's wrong? Can't pay the bills? Perhaps you're looking for a job, even. Ah, but all of that is irrelevant now. It's not like you're going to be going anywhere, even if I did let you out of this cell. You probably have no idea where you even are, are you? Trust me, you're not in hell anymore. Very far from it. The prisoner seems confused. They legitimately believe that they are in some form of ring of hell. But now, they stop to think and wonder how do they even get here to begin with. They try their hardest to remember, but they don't remember a single thing. They don't remember getting in any kind of car or train or anything that brought them here. They just happen to be here, as if they fell asleep and woke up somewhere else. And they can't recall as to why. They simply appeared here, and instead of questioning it, decided to just boldly go with it and try to steal from the nearest house that looked promising and thus ended up here. Ah, there's that look. That look of genuine confusion. Peering back into your memories as hard as you can, wondering how you even got here in the first place, are you? I've seen that look. So many times, so many times. Don't you worry, dear. There's nothing to worry about any longer. Your new life will be awaiting you soon enough. Perhaps you can already feel it happening too, can't you? Oh, so close to your chest. They lay upon the slab and demand to their captor to explain themselves, wondering what do they mean by new life, and what do they mean by a change so close to the chest. They demand to go home as they take their hands and touch their chest, wondering what do they mean by this. They feel how skinny their chest has become, their stomach practically concaved, they can feel their ribs even protruding from their skin. And then they feel it. The feeling of string, surgical string and dried blood. Stitches there were in the center of the chest, forming a straight line up to their neck. And in the center of their chest, their mouth and eyes start to widen with shock and terror. They take two fingers and put it to their neck, wondering if they can feel a pulse. But there is none. No pulse. In fact, their skin feels awfully cold, yet they do not shiver. They do not quake from the cold at all. They simply just feel so hollow. The prisoner in a panic rips open their shirt to look upon their chest and sees the stitches of rough and cobbled together surgery. They notice the skin around this hole was as pale white as snow as it creeps through them like a plague as their skin becomes necrotic. Select Z walks over, swaying and striding as they slowly lift up 
a sack of leather caked in dried blood with black dripping ooze coming off from it as they plop it down onto the slab of which the prisoner laid upon. The prisoner retracts their feet back to try and stay away from it, and they noticed it is moving, beating. They have a very good idea as to what it is, but the prisoner refuses to believe it. It's not possible. How could it be? Selexi slowly opens it, and it was revealed to be so. A severed, beating heart, still alive and still moving. Now, pale and white, covered in black veins. They have never seen their heart before, but they are murderously certain it wasn't white. Regardless if they were a sinner of where their body and form was twisted and changed by the powers of hell when they entered it, there is no way the rest of their body could be so red, and yet their heart so white like snow. And seeing the white creeping colors in the center of their chest where the stitches are, they can tell something very foul is happening here. Zelexi slowly turns and walks away, facing away from them. The prisoner stutters and roughly starts to sit up from the slab and crawls to the edge, shouting and demanding to know how this is possible and what did they do to them. They know that they are dead, a sinner in hell, or so what they thought was hell, but they demanded to know how could they even be breathing alive right now without their heart how is this even possible and they demanded to know what have they done to them or what do they plan to do to them demanding to know how is it that they are still alive and selexi turns slowly as they get to the door they did not have a look of wickedness no smug smirk they actually had a look of concern as they tilt their head with their eyes wide open and says, Are you even alive? Are any of us even alive? You were a mortal on earth once, died, went to hell, experienced a new life, left hell, came here, and now you're about to experience a whole new life. So tell me, what is death even, if all it is is just turning a page into another chapter? What does it mean to even be alive in the first place? Selexi gives very cryptic words, as if any villain would in a poetic way, but they had a point. They died once, went to hell, supposedly died again. And now they're here. And now they're experiencing themselves dying once again. Over and over and over. And begins to have an existential crisis. As Alexei closes the door to leave, the prisoner screams that they are insane and mad. But they are met with silence once again. That silence, that horrible silence. They lay upon the slab, curling up into a small ball. They see the ashes upon the floor, like small little dunes of a desert. The only sound that can be heard is the howling whispers of the wind passing through the stone halls. Some of the wind dancing across the little ash piles as they form little poof clouds like sand being blown in the wind. There is nothing but silence, that horrible silence once again, until it is broken by the sound of growth of vines piercing through the stone. They are black 
with thorns upon them. They creep and crawl out of the small holes all over the jail cell, like a group of worms trying to wiggle and writhe out from a small hole. They creep and crawl throughout the whole jail cell, so quick and rapidly. They are covered in white, pink, and purple roses as they blossom and bloom from their vines. How could something look so pretty, yet so horrifying? Perhaps it was a metaphorical statement to Selexi themselves. The vines creep all over as they start to slowly encase the walls and cover the floor. They start to surround the slab that the prisoner laid upon, crawling up the base of it. The prisoner tries to curl themselves up into a little ball and stay as far away from the edges of the slab as they can, looking around, wondering for a way out. Was there a window? No. No windows to be found. Could they break open the door? No. The door is too heavy and large. And even if they could, there were too many vines everywhere. Perhaps they were harmless. But after seeing what happened to their chest, they can't tell anymore. The vines begin to pierce away at their chest wound, pouring into their body as their whole body slowly turns white. They lay there, comforted and blanketed by these roses as if it was a sheet for them in bed. They lie there feeling no pain. A day feels like a month, and a month feels like a year as time stretches so far. The prisoner lays there, unable to close their eyes, always awake for what feels like countless eons, praying and begging for a death that never comes, wondering that even if they did die, would they just go into yet another afterlife? Or would their eyes finally shut for good?